there is a, a complexity to, to knowing that you're going to die and knowing that, that you won't be there to guide your children. How are you? How are you going? How are you feeling? Largely, I'm good. I think that, um, you know, my health is poor uh, and I have a lot of pain. Um, fatigue is a, a big issue for me. Nausea, you know, just my legs swelling up, my arms swelling up. Medically, it's relentless. You don't get a break. You don't, um, you don't get to have cancer during your working hours and, and, and pop it on a shelf and go home and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's been seven years and I'm tired. But I'm really thankful that at this stage with my health declining quite rapidly and sort of having in the back of my mind that, that Christmas probably isn't gonna be on my radar, um, that I've got the Big Heart Project to, to distract me, uh, to keep me busy, um, and to, to make me um, focus on something other than myself and my family and feeling sorry for us. Because I have, over the years, over this past seven years, I have gone into some very deep pits of despair. I feel like if I wasn't focused on the Big Heart Project right now, that's where I would be. What's the biggest thing that you've learned about cancer, other than the fact that it's screwed up? I, I don't think I'm any different to any other cancer patient. You, you just dig just as deep as you need to to get the strength that you need to get through that day. And then you hope that you're not going to have to dig that deep tomorrow. Yeah. I think that we're all the same like that. I don't think there's anybody who gets a cancer diagnosis and feels like just giving up, you know. I think everybody fights with passion and with all the strength they can muster. What do you say to your family? You're beautiful boys and every time I see them on Facebook and they, they're giving their mum such a big cuddle or writing you a little message. I mean, sometimes they say, how are you going? And I'm like, yeah, I feel pretty good. Oh, great, so that means we can go to the movies. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> and um, other times it's how you're feeling and you think, okay, that's not as simple as it sounds because they're trying, you can see them trying to grapple with, with what it means when mum can't get out of bed for the whole day. I hear them. Um, playing and talking with Mike and and they'll say, oh, I'm going to tell Mum. And they, they sort of head to my room and I can hear them coming and then I hear Dad say, no, no, she's resting. Leave her be and I feel like... I feel like I'm letting them down because I can't be the mum I want to be. I physically don't have the capacity sometimes. And that's going to get worse and worse over the coming months. You know that you are the mum that they love. And your strength through this, oh my God. You are completely inspiring. And every day, you know, I'm sure that they watch you and they watch what you're doing with this Big Heart Project and just think, my mum is the absolute bee's knees. <laughs> What do you need from us for Wednesday? What do you need from the Canberra community? So if you can, um, if you can come along uh, at any time during the day, the gates will open at seven. The first coin gets laid at 8 a.m. There's heaps of coffee and food, so you can stop for your morning coffee and breakfast before work. If you're working, you can come after work. If you're at school, you can come after school. The event goes till 8 p.m. I suspect people will be hanging around a lot longer than that. And there's uh, heaps of entertainment for the young and the young at heart. And um, that will go all through the day. On the day, the most important thing that you can do is to uh, 
bring bring along your coins. It doesn't have to all be five cent pieces, um, but bring along your coins. Throw them into the heart, and as you do that, think about a world without cancer, and think about how you can be a part of the moonshot to get rid of cancer forever.